Good day YouTube family. So, somebody has challenged me to make some DIY vermiculite fire bricks. So they saw the pizza oven series and they thought, well, why don't you make some fire bricks out of it and try to make a mini forge. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make some uh, forms up and just make some small little vermiculite bricks. Um, and hopefully it'll be laid up this, like this. So this is a front view bit of a side view, so we're going to have a top brick, a bottom brick, uh, two sides and an end. All will become clear when you see me making the bricks. So, these are the forms that we've just knocked together, just some scrap MDF and just fired a few screws in the ends so they're easy to take apart. This is the form for the bottom and the top. These are going to be the sides and then this is our end. So it'll give you a pretty good idea of how to give you a better idea. If I just lay this on here, lay this on here, there's gonna be another one here. So the gap is fairly small in the middle of the forge uh, just because we want it to heat up quicker. So the mix we're going to use is seven parts vermiculite, two parts cement, two parts sand, and then enough water to bind it all together so it's sticky and that when we hold it in our, in our clenched hand, it will be just like a nice molded uh, shape. So these are the materials that we are using. Uh, we've got some medium grade vermiculite, although um, you could use coarse. Uh, I've got some, just some sand we had left over from another project and some Vesuvius, which is actually, um, refractory, I think that's how you say it, refractory cement. Um, and this is what we've looked, this is what it looks like in the barrow. So we've got seven parts vermiculite, two parts cement, two parts sand. We're gonna mix this up together while it's dry, uh, just so it's easier. And then uh, we'll add water to really combine it. Now, I think it's probably worth saying that the refractory cement here could be just kind of subbed out for just normal cement, because Portland would work fine, I'm sure. So just from experience and previous projects, it's really important that we try to get the cement evenly mixed with the vermiculite before you add water. As soon as you add water to this stuff, it becomes very hard to mix together. And make sure you get right in the corners of the bucket or barrow or whatever you're using. So as you can see here, it's a lovely sticky consistency um, and it all is clumping together really nicely. So all we did was lay the material into the forms. I was using a trowel just to really compact it down and make it nice and firm. You could do this with your hands if you wanted to, but this was giving me a nice even flat effect. And uh, this trowel also enabled me to get a lovely smooth finish on the surface. So when we wanted to remove the form, we had to be quite careful that we didn't damage the edges of the brick. So I just gave it a light little tap and a shake. And as you can see, it slid straight off. So here we've got the final uh, finished fire bricks and it's worth saying that the amount of water that we used when we mixed these bricks was 3.5 parts. So when we do the parts mixing, we were using seven parts vermiculite, two parts cement, two parts sand and water to bind. We actually used 3.5 parts of water and that gave us a nice sticky consistency which allowed us to create our bricks from the forms. Now when we were trying to get the bricks out uh, we just vibrated the forms a little bit gave them a little light shake and uh, most of them came out quite cleanly the only one that didn't was this one as you can see it's a little bit untidy on the edge but that's fine, it's not gonna be seen anyway. 
So we're going to leave these for two days over the weekend and then we'll come back on Monday and we'll see if they are hard enough to move. If not, we'll leave them to cure and harden. Um, you might notice that this board is kind of shiny. It's a nice slippery board, uh, so these should just slide straight off once they've set.